Hey there, welcome back if you've been here before. If you're new around here, I'm Julie McCoy and I explore the rabbit hole of AI in a world where nearly all human labor gets replaced by AI, automation, and robotics. This is a future that over 2,700 AI researchers have predicted as of January 2024, and we are rocket launching to that point at full steam. There's no stopping it. I want to, number one, bring awareness to it, dispel all the myths, cut through the clickbait, and number two, help you prepare mentally in your state of mind and physically. What are you actually going to do for work? Today's video is a follow-up to one of my most popular videos filmed to date called The Path to UBI Post-AGI, where I talked about what universal basic income is, the concept of it, and the post-labor economy we are headed towards, where we won't have to work because artificial intelligence and physical robots are handling that human work in a way that supersedes any human. So anyway, go watch that video for a basic awareness about that concept if you're completely new to it. This is a bit of a deeper dive. This video is also directly influenced by the book I'm about to show you. But first, let me share with you a book that I just finished. You might have seen me talk about it in other videos. 2084 by John Lennox. I really appreciated that book for the viewpoint the author had, who by the way is a PhD and a professor of mathematics at Oxford, very smart person, faith-based, believes in God. And he brought up this incredible point, how humanity is always searching for something great, something beyond them. And the danger in the singularity and this post-labor economics world that we're headed towards, it's gonna change everything, is this desire for transhumanism, which is fueled by a lack of appreciation for our humanity, a humanity that is God-given. And when we seek to replace or augment our brains, our limbs, our bodies to become half-human, potentially upload our brains into a cloud, live in an altered state of being, if that comes from the fatigue of being human, that is a very dangerous spot because then it means we're on the search for something great and that greatness is only satisfied by the supernatural, the things that feed our soul. And so when we turn to robotics to fill that void and we even mess with our bodies and become half robots, things can get really scary and humans could end up in a living hell. It was a really good book because I thought it brought awareness to those points in a really balanced way. It didn't just point out the fear, it pointed out the good as well, the benefits that AI is bringing humanity. But I do agree, transhumanism is very scary and it has a lot of potential negative side effects. I for one would never attach a robot arm to myself if I have a perfectly good working arm. Some may call me the Terminator, it might be a running joke in my industry, but I love and appreciate being a human and that won't change. Now that said, I work full time in AI and I'm taking advantage of it to build a more efficient, better life and business. And I believe you should too. In fact, it's adapt or die right now. The human that adapts to AI will absolutely outperform the human not using AI yet. Okay, so moving on from 2084, here's a couple books I'm going to read that are next on my book stack. These are by Yuval Harari. They've been recommended to me. There's actually three books in this box set. Some of you in the YouTube comments recommended them to me. Sapiens and Homo Deus. I'm really excited to read about the history of humankind and the history of tomorrow. Like John Lennox, Yuval Harari has a PhD and he teaches at Oxford. What's interesting is those books have sold 45 million copies in 65 languages. But now on to the book that's actually inspired this entire video. An incredible book, AI 2041, probably one of the best I've read by somebody named Dr. Kai Fu Li. That name kind of reminds me of a Kung Fu master, but he is a Taiwanese businessman and computer scientist. He was the former president of Google China. He is currently the chairman and CEO of Cenovation Ventures, which runs a two and a half billion dollar fund developing Chinese high tech. He's also worked at Microsoft, SGI, and Apple, and history has it these companies fought over him. So he is an incredibly brilliant mind. Whenever I'm picking out the books I want to read, I find that the best books come from truly innovative computer scientists, people that have built programs with machine learning, LLMs, AI, people that have worked at Microsoft, Google, Apple. The books by these people beat out 90% of the articles you read on the internet on very similar topics by people that just don't have similar levels of expertise. This book covers so much and Dr. Lee has some pretty interesting viewpoints that I haven't heard anywhere else. I went ahead and skipped over to his chapter on UBI, read the whole thing. 
chapter eight, the job savior. There are some key predictions and points he makes that I think are critical to consider when thinking of how UBI, universal basic income, will shape our future. Is it a good or a bad thing for humanity? I wanna read a couple points to you from page 318. There are some telling statements in here that I think are 100% reflective of these concepts like UBI and the post-labor economy. And I think he has an uncanny level of accuracy in how he predicts what's coming. First of all, the speed at which this will occur, I think is on point. He says, and this is in a scenario where he's painting the future in a story. Humanity's competitor was AI, which could learn and improve continuously 24 seven without rest. Jobs that have been performed by humans just a month earlier were suddenly and ruthlessly overtaken by AI. The race had been underway for over 20 years, but suddenly it was apparent to everyone. There's no end in sight. Many employees are like turkeys on the farm waiting nervously for Thanksgiving. And so he talks about a world where people do not know what to do with themselves. And so they fill the streets protesting and they fill the bars at night drinking because they have no job and they have no hope. And here's what Dr. Lee says about UBI. Listen to this. Again, he's painting a future world where post-labor economy has happened, robotics has taken over most jobs, and UBI was put in place. The government tried UBI. They tried shortening the work week. History has shown that policies like UBI only prolong despair. They cannot solve the fundamental problem that people, without the sense of achievement they gain from substantive work, feel lost and hopeless. Without a sense of self-worth, they turn to literal or figurative narcotics. And who can save them from this predicament? And so then Dr. Lee goes on to describe in this fictional situation that's predictive of the future, a new industry that crops up to save UBI and that new industry is occupational restorationists. And what these people do, entire businesses set up as restorationists is they help people save their jobs and their dignity. And in the world presented in this chapter, Dr. Lee actually goes on to predict that these entities, some of which are funded and created by the government to help people find meaning in a post-slavery economy, actually create fake jobs and present them as real so that people have something to hold on to. And then they're paid through UBI, universal basic income. I thought that was uncanny and crazy to consider. If you've ever watched Ready Player One, again, another very dystopian negative movie about the future of what life could look like when people don't have economics and money driving output which is what we're looking at with post-labor economics. You see this dystopian in that movie where people escape to alternate realities and they live in that VR headset every day because it's better than actual reality and real life. But that is a scenario I don't believe we have to go in as humanity. In fact, I believe that as robotics and AI and automation get better and better and better at solving problems and doing the work, even the complex work, that we're not gonna turn to VR to find meaning, we're gonna turn to each other and community, and we'll have more time to spend with each other and our families. That said, Dr. Lee raises a great point that because of a hundred years of the industrial revolution, we've been driven to produce, we've been driven to have work ethic, and that's gonna be very hard to detach from society. And UBI as basically free money thrown at people to get them to find peace is not a great solution. We need more attached to it. And what Dr. Lee proposes in this scenario as a solution is to actually attach training to UBI proposals where endangered workers can choose and train for new professions. And that has to be attached to handing out these UBI checks. Well, let's help you find a new job. Let's help you find meaning. Dr. Lee does say that UBI can be successful if this is added in. Andrew Yang, an entrepreneur that actually ran in the 2020 US presidential election, actually focused his campaign on the displacement of American workers through automation. And UBI was a part of his campaign. He called it the Freedom Dividend, a universal basic income for all Americans, no strings attached. He would offer guaranteed payments to Americans of $1,000 per month. Now, I'm not sure he had the best plan. In fact, I'm not convinced he did, but at least 
He was a presidential candidate aware of what was coming and bringing it to the awareness of the people. He said that by 2015, automation had already destroyed 4 million jobs in manufacturing alone. And he said that a third of all working Americans will lose their job to automation in the next 12 years. Now, Dr. Kai-Fu Lee, as the book title would suggest, believes that automation at this level will happen by 2041, which is roughly 17 years away as of filming this video. Dr. Lee in this chapter also talks about what AI can and cannot do even 17 years into the future. I don't fully agree with these points. I think that AI will supersede and be able to hit some of these and outperform a human. But Dr. Lee says that by 2041, he doesn't believe AI will be able to think creatively on its own. I mean, we've seen Claude do some pretty creative thinking when you prompt it with a single sentence. So I don't know about that. The second point he raises, which I think is pretty true, is that AI will not have empathy. It might simulate empathy, but we will still desire the real empathy that only comes from another fellow living, breathing human. And so Dr. Lee says that what he calls human touch services will last, like massages, nannying, caretaking, and then dexterity. Dr. Lee says we're going to have a hard time overcoming complex physical work that requires a lot of dexterity. If you've seen China's new Astrobot, the S1 robot by Stardust Intelligence, it's absolutely mind-blowing what this thing can do. It can fold laundry about five times faster than the Tesla bot. It has incredible dexterity. So I think we will overcome that as well. Warehouse jobs, restaurant jobs, positions like being a security guard, a dishwasher, a warehouse worker, customer support assistants, cold calling, insurance underwriters, all these jobs will be automated, he says. But he believes when we go and get our hair done, for example, we will want to talk to a real human. And so that kind of job will still last. Working as a waiter or on the staff of a luxury restaurant where people want human touch, being a social worker, having a high level marketing PR position, being an entrepreneur, these things will last. I do wanna bring it back to a positive note. As you know, you should know by now if you've watched my videos, I am definitely an optimist, but I also consider myself a realist which is why I think we have to consider all angles and knowing that UBI by itself is not enough to help us prepare for what's coming with massive job displacement, creating a totally new void. And that void will be a problem because work does provide meaning. Preparing for that by attaching AI upskilling, AI reskilling to UBI is a great direction to go in. I'll end on this note. Some of you in the comments told me to pick up Rutger Bregman's Utopia for Realist. I've only just started reading this book, but let me tell you, I love it. One point that's made early on in this book, which I absolutely love, is how in medieval days, we would call it a utopia. To see somebody who couldn't walk and talk, have an AI brain chip implant, and be able to do those things again. That is the age we're living in. We are living in a utopia, but that utopia has actually created some massive disappointment because in the book, he talks about how we actually don't have meaning. The utopia we live in has created a bleak paradise where people don't have a reason to get out of bed in the morning. The thoughts in this book are amazing to whoever recommended it in the comments. I can't wait to keep reading it. And so of course the solution that he brings up is to keep going into the 15 hour work week, into the correct version of UBI. If we can arrive there into a post-labor economy because right now the utopia we are living in that the middle ages inhabitants wouldn't have believed has become like he said a bleak paradise a study by gallup of over a billion workers found that over 80 percent of people aren't happy at work instead there's major depression major isolation going on right now and so our next goal as a society could be this post-labor economy bringing us a new world with new benefits and opportunities, but only if we prepare for it well, like Dr. Lee says in AI 2041. We've got to start thinking about AI upskilling and reskilling now. 
How do we attach AI to our businesses? How do we learn these skills? How do we prepare our kids for what's coming? These are the right questions to ask. And if all you start doing after you watch my videos is start to ask better questions, then you are gonna be well prepared, my friend. No one can predict the future. We're headed towards one that is unbelievably crazy, and it's going to be exciting to see the benefits and what we can make of this. If in fact, we do our job and we make something good out of it. I'd love to hear from you in the comments. Always appreciate the wisdom that so many of you have dropped on my YouTube videos in the comments. It's unbelievable to hear from people who have studied this for over a decade. Massive respect to you for digging into the quarters that I find not a lot of people are willing to talk about, but we have to. As always, thank you for watching. Hit subscribe if you haven't. I'll see you right back here on my channel.